What's up peeps, Overman back again, and today I wanted to talk about Destiny's story because I was browsing through the interwebs and I came across a review of The Taken King by a little company called IGN. And they said that The Taken King's story was, and I quote, amazing. And then they went on to give The Taken King expansion a whopping 9 out of 10 rating. So I'll give my overall thoughts on the expansion later this week, but right now I wanted to talk about the story because I don't think it's amazing. And I think that these major sources who are saying that it is are either full of shit or maybe they just don't know any better. And I know some of you are already typing your comments saying, but Overman, you can't just say people are full of shit simply because they don't agree with you. Yes, my good sir or madam. But you could say the same thing about a guy who eats a piece of shit and proclaims it as the most amazing thing ever or some weirdo on YouTube who doesn't like carrot cake. In both cases, these people are out of their mind, but fear not. I lay out my reasoning for why I think some of these major sources are full of shit. Like I said in my review, I thought the Taking King's story made some steps in the right direction, those being the cutscenes and the character development. But that's really the only thing that they did right, and they did the bare minimum here. First off, there's no build up to that opening scene. A little bit of setup and character development would have been really great for the two sides involved, and it would have greatly enhanced the experience of the fight. Can you imagine what the fight between Voldemort and Dumbledore would have been like if there was no character development or build up to it? It would have just been two guys going at it. And yeah, you know they're both powerful, but it would diminish the significance and impact of the whole thing just just like it did in this opening sequence. This would have also partially made up for the shitty story we got in year one and it would have really set up the scene for Oryx to come through and start shit up. For example, we could all be chilling in the tower and talking about the major events in year one like Atheon and Crota and we could have some other sections where we talk about the big questions in the Destiny universe like why did the Traveler come here? Why is the darkness so pissed at the Traveler? Why are we all fighting? Why don't we all just smoke a bowl and play some soccer in the tower? All questions that we still don't have answers to and most frustrating of all, these questions have yet to even appear in the the damn game. So instead of having a nice introduction, we're thrusted straight into the action, which is normally the middle section of a story. And this middle section is quite lackluster as well. I mean, we just go around shooting aliens in the face in order to get access to the Dreadnought. This should be a journey for our character, who's the hero, and a time for personal growth when our character faces tough challenges and overcomes personal weaknesses. There should be triumphs and losses, we should be making friends and enemies, but we don't get any of that. We just shoot aliens in the face because aliens are the bad guys, right? I mean, yes, we do go steal Crota's soul in order to confront Oryx, and we do get that mission where we have to stand near the Death Singers and get Crota's essence, and all that's great, but I really think this could have been fleshed out more. The Death Singer part could have been so much creepier if they could talk, and we could have an actual confrontation with them in a cutscene, you know, like in a normal video game. Also, another thing that bothers me is that our character just doesn't feel as badass as they should. Guardians are in the 1% in the Destiny universe, and that's not because we were birthed by the lawyer that got OJ off and then made a sex tape with Ray J. No, we're in the 1% because we wield the light as a weapon against the darkness, and with that power, we've destroyed the Black Garden, beaten Atheon, Crota, Skolas, and now Oryx. But the world doesn't really treat us that way. Sure, Cade says you're his favorite and all that, but that doesn't really sound genuine. Getting compliments from Cade is a lot like getting them from your grandmother. Sure, it's a nice gesture, but it doesn't really mean much or feel authentic unless, of course, you are that type of guy to go around holding your head high because grandma said you were a good boy. In something like Mass Effect, everyone knows who Shepard is because he's the most badass motherfucker in the story. And that game made you feel that way. You really feel like Shepard. You really feel like you stand out and you feel special because you fucked up Starin and that first Reaper. And then you went on that whole epic journey to get to the Collector base and shut it down. In fact, think about the journey you went on in Mass Effect 2. The outline of the story is actually quite similar to the Taken Kings. This new faction of bad guys shows up and you need to find out why they come here and why they're taking humans. And then you eventually gain access to their ship, fight a bunch of them, and then you ultimately need to find a way through the Omega Relay in order to storm their home base in the center of the galaxy. If you've played Mass Effect 2, you only need to compare the Taken King story to that game story to see that it really is isn't all that amazing. That story is miles greater than the one we get here in Destiny because there's so much more drama and tension going on throughout the story and the types of drama and tension that you get is specific to your story depending on which choices you make, adding an extra layer of depth to the story. But back to the point of our character, in Destiny, you're much more like you are in real life. Just another average Joe that does the same shit as all the other average Joes over there. Our characters in Destiny feel super generic and that's because they are. We aren't given any real lines and we have absolutely no personality. And what about some backstory on Oryx before we fight him? I mean, to me, Oryx just seemed like Crota with wings courtesy of that Red Bull deal. He didn't really feel like an epic and powerful villain. In fact, he seems to be painfully generic. However, according to the Grimoire, Oryx is actually incredibly interesting. He had 
previous encounters with the Vex, and he seeks to understand them. Hell, it seems like he wants them to help him or become their king or god in a way, and he has this thirst for understanding and control much like a human dictator. But we never see this in game, all we see is this generic bad guy with generic ass motives. You know it's funny how he's pissed about us killing Crota, but he was the one who threw Crota out into the wilderness in the first place. Here's the quote from the grimoire. My son, he said, this is your punishment. Come home glorious or die forgotten. He picked up Crota by the legs and threw him into the Vex gate network. How you gonna tell your kid die forgotten and then get mad when he dies forgotten? This just sounds like lazy writing and bad parenting to me. Furthermore, what are the taken? How are they taken? Where are they taken? And most importantly, why the fuck are they so much stronger? Eris and Ikora have an interesting discussion about what the Taken are, but this is never mentioned in the story so I'll read it for you. Oryx wields this power, but Oryx did not make it. We face the same flower we met in the Black Garden. The process is simple. An aperture opens, like a jaw, and swallows a living thing. It passes into another place. Later, it returns. What returns is... I try to use the word shadow, but Eris hisses at me. A shadow is a flat projection cast by a light in an object, less real. Eris insists that these Taken are more real somehow. She uses words like inhabited, exalted, rendered final. Is this power blind? Just a natural energy Oryx discovered? I cannot believe it. My hidden tell me that the Taken shine with seething negative light, as if the universe is curling up around them, as if they radiate some pathology that decays into our world as nothingness. The Taken serve Oryx. But I think those jaws lead elsewhere. Why the hell is this not in the game? This dialogue raises so many questions about the nature of the Taken. What are they? Some Super Saiyan version of the darkness? This is the type of thing we should be talking about in game. This is an integral part of the story that's being left out. And I know I normally give Bungie a lot of shit, but it's obvious that I gotta put the blame on Activision here. Obviously some people in the Bungie team know what they're doing. Those Grimoire cards are great, but we don't get that story in game. What we get in game is the bare minimum, a mere outline of the greater story. We miss out on all of the details found in the Grimoire. And this has been the problem with Destiny since day one, and they're still doing Doing it. And it's the same reason why Akkad isn't getting full dedicated servers in the new engine. It's the same reason why we replay so much content in Destiny. It's the same reason we run through vanilla areas and activities so much in year 2. It's cost cutting. They cut costs and do the bare minimum to make the maximum profit. It's why they spend so much on advertising. They know advertising has a greater effect on sales than quality does. Well it's time we told them to fuck off. Make some noise however you can because if we don't, this is the type of story we'll be getting from now on. How can a story be amazing with a silent and uninteresting hero and a generic ass villain? Can you imagine if the Matrix was like that? Imagine if Neo had no personality and Morpheus made childish bad breath jokes and Smith simply told Neo that he wasn't worthy. What kind of movie would The Matrix be? I'd imagine it'd be a lot like the shitty action movies we get these days. Reject this low quality bullshit. Feel free to point out what you like about the story, but don't forget about all the things you didn't like either because the story wasn't amazing. It has a long way to go before it can truly be amazing. Also, think about the implications of calling this story amazing. Bungie and other devs will feel less inclined to include a deep and interesting story and will instead do the bare minimum like they did here in Destiny. What incentive does Bioware have to write an amazing story for a new Mass Effect game if they could just write any old generic ass story with a little character development and a few cheesy jokes and then go on to attain greater commercial success like in Destiny. Stories are supposed to make us laugh, think, and feel. Cade will barely make you laugh in The Taken King and there's not much else to make you think or feel. But you can find this in other stories. Some amazing stories like Mass Effect 2 and GTA 5 will certainly make you laugh, think, and feel. A lot more than The Taken King would. Think back to that GTA 5 scene where you're torturing that guy. I mean, you can't tell me you didn't feel some type of way when you smashed this guy's balls in with a friggin' wrench. And then after feeling that way, that prompted you to think about what's happening in the real world. Because that's shit that happens in the real world. I mean, sure, it might be an exaggerated, hyperbolic version of what happens in the real world, but nonetheless, it is what happens in the real world. And that's what amazing stories do. They reflect on thoughts, feelings, and ideas that stem in the real world, and then present it in a hyperbolic fashion for entertainment value. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't mind that. And I don't mind if you enjoy the Taken King story. That's totally fine with me. You can enjoy whatever you like. But don't call it amazing because then that de-incentivizes everyone else from making amazing stories and then we'll be setting the bar lower 
for our standards of quality. I said in my review of the Taking King story that I thought it was on par with the gaming industry and that's because, I mean to be honest, a lot of the stories we see in games aren't that great. You know, there are some gems like Mass Effect and GTA 5 and others that I haven't played, but for the most part, a lot of the games I play, man, they just don't have great stories. An example of this is Mad Max. I played that game on and off since it released, and while the gameplay is fun and there's some quirks with it, the story is just so lackluster. I mean, I'm kind of in the middle part of the game and there's just nothing. There's no story whatsoever. It's kind of like Destiny. But I know this story could be so much better if they put some effort into it. But instead it just feels lazy. But maybe I'm in the minority here. Maybe some people just like this bland storytelling. Maybe some people don't like to think and feel. Maybe they don't like to feel alive. Maybe they like the zombie nature of ordinary life. Maybe that's what they want from their video games. And to those people, I say you should have a dinner with Andre, but I digress. And in a lot of ways, this situation reminds me of a movie called A Dinner with Andre. In one part of this movie, these guys talk about how the theater really isn't what it used to be. The so-called great plays that they would see these days would have been mocked and seen as mediocre a few years ago. And I feel the same way about what's going on in the gaming industry right now. And I have a quote from that movie that really sums up what I feel here. At one point, Andre quotes someone else, and that person says something to the effect of, I could always live in my art, but never in my real life. That's it for this one guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you're not feeling too shy, drop a comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite story that you encountered in a video game. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow me on Twitter. Link will be in the description box below. That's it for me though guys. Over man. Out.